Okay, so the next question that we have on the menu today is asking us what in the world is going to be the value of sine 15 degrees. Okay, there are many different ways that we can um, address this situation. Uh, the first most easy way, in my opinion, is just directly uh, direct calculation. So the direct calculation, well, let me ask my calculator ASAP fast, is going to be 0 0.25881. And this is a decent answer, but this is not exact answer. Not exact enough. Okay, we, um, you know, if you just need this number directly, this could be good, but let's say you have signed um, 15 degrees and then you have multiple calculations afterward that all depend on this calculation you will definitely run into problems if you just like round it right here okay so you know and sometimes you can get away with it it really depends on the context that you're in to what degree this is acceptable to just put it directly into your calculator okay another way that we can um, address this is graphically So if we were to draw a sine function like this, where we have 180 degrees, 360 degrees, uh, this would be 90 degrees, and uh, suppose that our sine curve looks a little something like that we know that well this is going to be 40 uh, 45 and this is about a third of this you know graphically we can see that it's going to be about 0.25 and this is approximately 0 0.25 it was honestly even less precise but like if you're really in a pinch and you don't even have a calculator this could be a good way to get an estimation and um, as long as you know how to draw a sine graph with relative precision you can get a decent estimate of what's going on but um, um, to get the exact version you definitely do not want to do it graphically um, to get the exact version you'll want to go through a process of sine I mean trigonometric uh, equalities or identities Okay, so the, the main one that we want to no use here is that we know that sine squared of x is equal to 1 half 1 minus cos squared of x. Okay, so if we have x is equal to 15, then we could rewrite this as sine squared 15 degrees or instead I'll actually write this uh, this way so sine of 15 degrees and we squared because that's really what the the sine squared means is just like this it's a little bit more clear but a little bit tougher to write is going to be equal to one half of one minus cos 2 times uh, 2 times two times 15 degrees which of course we know is going to be 30 degrees okay so um, simplifying this even further if we're going to isolate sine 15 degrees We've got to take the square root of the whole left uh, right side so this will be um, 1 minus 
cos 30 degrees. So that's 2 times 15 over 2. That's just another way of rewriting it. And um, cos 13, even if we don't have a calculator, um, we can kind of imagine what that is off the top because if we have a equilateral triangle, and we do something like this, we know that this has to be 30 degrees here, right? So let's say each had a side length of two. This now has a side length of one. And um, if we take this half of a uh, equilateral triangle, chopped in half, this right here with Pythagoras theorem has to be root three. This has to be one. Hypotenuse has to be Two, and this is the 30 degrees that we're looking for, we know that cos of 30 degrees has to be the um, current, no, the adjacent over hypotenuse with Sokotoa. So our adjacent in this case is root 3, our hypotenuse is 2, so uh, we could sub this in to our equation up there. So sine 15 degrees is equal to under the root 1 minus root 3 over 2 uh, all divided by 2 and another way that we could write this is uh, sine 15 is equal to under the root 1 over 2 minus root 3 over 4. Okay, so yeah, that's where this all came from. And uh, yeah, we would get that same result here. Exactly. Um, Yeah, so that two, um, I think that's just a mistyping because uh, that is highly strange how that one became a two. Um, it, could, it could be equal, but um, what we have here is uh, perfectly valid as well. Um, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Nice. So um, I trust my answer more because I'm not sure why that suddenly became a two. But uh, yeah, this is the answer that we came to with with some trigonometry, with some trig identities, and um, some algebra. We can can't come to a much more exact uh, number. Of course, like we still want to send this to a calculator, eventually. But um, you know, if we need high precision math, uh, this would be the way to go. Okay. Uh, oh, also plus minus. Because of the square root, we have to do uh, plus minus. Okay, so um, yeah. So the setup of solution is good. Um, step three. Oh, okay. Uh, never mind. It makes sense. And uh, these these got to be uh, they're, they're going to be equivalent. I I just know that. Right. Okay. So yeah, the above solution is good. Just had a lapse in my mental algebra for a second. Um, to get from here to there, uh, we pretty much just want to make this first term also have a denominator of two. So uh, one is going to be equal to two over two. So that becomes two over two minus that, and then everything is uh, nice and easy. Yep. Okay, very straightforward. Cool. So yeah, the above solution is good. Awesome. Different ways to write the same.